Hello, I'm Professor Toybox. I'm here with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and I'd like to welcome you back to my Fantasia Toybox for another episode of Toybox Tutorials. We're working on the interior of the Magician's Castle. When Mickey descends the stairs and enters the courtyard here, he discovers a locked gate blocking his path. The key that opens it is on the other side of the gate. And to get the key, Mickey needs to solve a little puzzle, and that's what we're going to start building today. There's a tunnel over here inside of this well, and we drop down inside here. The tunnel leads under the wall over to the other side where the key is, and so Mickey needs to use this tunnel to get over here and get to the key. The problem is that the brooms have filled it up with water, and Mickey has to defeat the brooms and then drain the water so he can use the tunnel. So the first thing we're going to need are some brooms, and I'm going to go ahead and place down two enemy wave generators over here. And I'll tuck them in the corner here so they're out of the way. And we're also going to need a locator. So we'll come over here and pick that up. <laughs> that took a little while. And I'm going to stick it eh, right about here. And the little blue dot is facing that direction, which is where I'd like it to go. So we're going to connect up each of these wave generators to that locator. Like that. And we'll do the same with the other one. And for the first one, we'll come down and configure the wave. And we're going to need the brooms, so we'll scroll down here until we find those. There we are. And normally you could just add one and set the count, but this actually works better if we set them in here individually, is what I've learned. So we're going to do that instead of setting the count on each one. And under the properties, I'm going to set the generation delay to three. So it'll be about three seconds between each enemy coming in. And we're going to do the exact same thing with this enemy wave generator. So we'll come down and find the broom. And we'll add in five. And again, five per enemy wave generator seems to work pretty well on my Wii U. It doesn't bog things down too badly. There we are. So now we have a couple of enemy wave generators. If we generate these enemy waves right now, the brooms are just going to meander around the courtyard until Mickey gets close enough for them to attack. But what I would like is for them to be carrying water from this little lake over here over to the well, and then returning to the lake for more water. And to do that, we're going to need to set up a patrol route. And that brings us to our topic for today's lesson, the enemy trail guide. So I'm going to come out of spark mode here, and we'll scroll over to the right just a little bit. You'll find the enemy trail guide here in the Creativitoys drawer. And I'm going to drop the first one down over here next to the well. And I think that's about as close as I can get it. And not that it really matters, but I'm going to put the little arrow facing this way just so I can remind myself that that's the direction they're going to be coming. And then to set up a little route here, I'm going to set up another one over this way. And I want them to come over here to the water. And I'm going to put the base of this right underneath that little edge there, which will kind of hide it a little bit. And then if we just have them run directly back to the well, they're going to kind of be bumping into each other. So we'll set up a fourth one over here, kind of out of the way a little bit, like that. And now for the enemy trail guide, we'll open the logic menu. And there's three properties. There's the enemy marching speed. And so the slower you set this, the slower they'll go, It'll be kind of a walking speed. The faster you set this, they'll be running. And you'll actually see the enemies running or walking in a lot of cases. And I'm going to set this to four for my brooms. That's about equivalent to their normal walking speed. The focus level 
is how focused the enemy is on getting to this trail guide. And so if you set this to 100 for a lot of enemies, they're going to be completely focused on this toy and they'll ignore you basically unless you start attacking them. Um, that doesn't actually work with all enemies and you'll see here shortly the brooms don't really behave this way. Um, for the Beagle Boys, this worked really good in my DuckTales toy box, but for the brooms, um, they treat this <laughs> as if it were more like 50%. And again, the lower you set this, um, the more focused or less focused they're going to be on getting to you. I'm going to leave this set at 100. The third property is to teleport if they can't get here. So if, for example, we took a couple of pieces of terrain out and there was no way for the AI, pathfinding AI, to get from where the enemy is to get to here. If you set this to true, then they'll teleport to get over here. And this way you ensure that they actually get to this toy no matter what obstacles might be in their way. I'm going to leave that set to off. So we have 4, 100, and off. And I'm going to set that same property on all of these. So really the only thing I need to set is the enemy marching speed because the other two are fine. And one more. All right. Now you'll notice there was nothing under there that controlled that behavior that we want. And if you look under the logic connection, the only trigger signal this broadcasts is when the enemy actually arrives at this point. So to get the enemy moving this way, you need to do it with a uh, trigger signal connected up to this. Some other toy has to direct this uh, to activate it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a trigger area right over top of this locator where the enemies are coming in. And I'm going to set this a little bit smaller, about one block in size. And so we can come over here to the trigger area. Here we are. And we'll do a new logic connection when entered by AI enemy. We're going to come over here to this enemy trail guide. And there's one action you can have it do, and that is summon the triggering enemy. So the enemy wave generator will generate the enemy in here. And as soon as the enemy appears, the trigger area will send them marching over here toward this point. <laughs> trying to select it. There we go. And so now on this one, we can do a new logic connection. When the enemy has arrived, we can now direct them over to this one. And we'll say summon the triggering enemy. So now the enemy gets here and they'll start moving this way. And when the enemy gets to this one, we can do a new logic connection when the unit arrives and send them down to the next one. And so you can see we can string these together to set up a patrol route for our enemies. And we'll do a new logic connection on this one when the unit has arrived. Send them over here. And one more connection when the unit arrives here. We'll send them back to the first one. And so now we've set up a loop where they'll march back and forth between the water and the well. And that's really good. Now normally I would use the level starter to kick this off. And so we'll go ahead and do that. But since uh, I'm already in the level, I'm also going to need a button. And so I'm going to drop the button down up here. And we'll put it up on the wall so we're out of the way and the enemies won't detect us. Then we can kind of watch and see what happens. And we'll also put down the level starter. There it is. And we'll put this up here out of the way as well. So on the level starter, we'll do a new logic connection on Catalyze. I'm going to come down to the first wave generator and generate the wave. And it's going to generate the enemies here about three seconds apart, give or take, depending on how the CPU is doing. And then once that is done, 
and the wave is generated on this wave generator. We'll do a new logic connection when wave is generated. So all five enemies are in there. Then we'll come over to the next one and generate that wave. And when this one is done, when the wave is generated, we'll come over here and deactivate the trigger area so that any enemies that happen to wander in there won't automatically start wandering back this way. And now because we're already in the level, we need the button to trigger the level starter. So we'll do a new logic connection when pressed, come to the level starter and say start. And just in case we need to test this multiple times, I'll hook up my reset button here. So new logic connection when pressed. We'll come over to each of the enemy wave generators and defeat the wave. That way if something goes wrong, <laughs> we have a way to abort without uh, having to battle ten brooms. And the other thing we should do is turn the trigger area back on. And there we go. So that should be everything. And so now we'll come up here to the top of the wall. And we'll hit the button and see what happens. Okay. So the brooms should start coming in. There we go. You can see they're spaced apart. There's a little bit of more of a gap. It's not exact, unfortunately. It'd be nice if it were, but yeah, they're spaced out pretty well. Now, I <laughs> wonder why <laughs> those guys are stopping. That's just weird. <laughs> a bit of a hiccup in the line. Something's distracting them. Not sure what it is. I'm up on the wall. Huh. Of course, it did not do this when I was testing this. So now we got one guy down there who's just kind of meandering. But the rest of them are following the patrol path. And so that's nice. <laughs> one little guy is just going to be a rebel. He's just doing his own thing. That's weird. He's going to disrupt the line for everybody else. It's not infallible, as you see, but it works pretty well. The enemies are spaced out pretty good. And so now, that would all be kicked off by the level starter. And so Mickey would be starting up here by the door. And as we come down the stairway, we can see the brooms marching back and forth, which is good. And when we get close enough, then they'll adjust their trajectory. Well, they usually would. That little guy's attacking me. Oh, there they come. Now a few of them are starting to attack. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, we'll just go ahead and delete those guys. Of course, the brooms didn't do this when I was testing this out. So probably I should set the focus level down to maybe 70 or 80. And that way they'll be mostly focused on those enemy trail guides. But they would divert if I came a little closer and attack me instead. But anyway, now we have the brooms that are filling up the well with water. The next thing we need to do is to add the water and a way to drain it. But we'll do that next time. Until then, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you found today's lesson helpful, and despite the little hiccups that we had there. You can set up lots of different patrol routes for your enemies with this toy, and that can make your toy boxes much more interesting. If you haven't already signed up on my blog or subscribed to my YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that so you don't miss the next episode. For now, Mickey and I are signing off from my Fantasia toy box, and we'll see you next time.